we talk about linings and trachea, right? Now we have to talk about from the trachea, let's make it uh, put trachea here and put it down here, right? Now we're just drawing a trachea, you know, my, my, uh, okay, let's just make this a trachea right here, right? And from the trachea, what I'm going to draw is, I'm going to have this beautiful drawing. This trachea goes, and at the level of T4, T5, or even we said, remember, from external angle, at the level of that, what, what's going to happen is this trachea divides into your two parts. What do you call this? Your primary bronchus, right? You have a primary bronchus, you have a right, let's say right primary bronchus. Let's make this a little wider because right bronchus, and this is going to be, let's make it a little like this. Because remember, your right bronchus and the left bronchus, let's just say, or you can say bronchi, bronchi is a plural, right? So the, it splits into at the level of T4 and T5, it splits into the right and left, okay? And the right bronchus is like usually like why like it's more vertical, okay? It's wider. Wider and shorter. So because of that, whenever like whenever you take the uh, you know, if you see like uh, you know, in, in infants or if you like swallow small coins, what happens is that usually what happens is it gets lodged into a right main bronchus because of the vertical and wider and because it's shorter okay so usually it gets lost in the right main bronchus all right now then after that what's and then these guys also look look even they also have this 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 cartilage these are same cartilage here but it's just that the name changes from here and becomes a cartilaginous plate they call us uh this those uh, 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 those uh, cartilage which are called cartilaginous cartilaginous uh plate okay and then what do what do they have is they do still have but well, we have to they do have the pseudo stratified the kind of cells that are lining here is obviously this lining cells are going to be my pseudo stratified pseudo okay stratified simple columnar and remember they do have gobbler cells and they have cilia all of them right so they do have present and all that kind of stuff then after that what, what's going to happen with this uh with these guys this gets split into this guys gets split into what are they going to get split into this guy is split into like you know you could simply say this uh, your it's going to be become your it's going to be uh, it's going to get into your secondary like secondary or you can say lower bronchi right and then after that it's become your tertiary bronchi so it'll keep it splitting down you know uh, if it's left it'll it'll make about like uh like eight uh about like eight uh this uh tertiary bronchi or so so keep making that okay i'm not gonna do it here but just know that so it's gonna make those tertiary bronchi okay and all the way till like let's just make it let's just write it down quickly all the way till to let's say from your uh like tertiary uh ter tertiary uh bronchi right you are gonna see all these cells are most of the times you're gonna see a pseudo pseudo stratified okay simple columnar epithelia this is what you're gonna see all the way down there okay from trachea from the primary bronchi secondary tertiary bronchi all of them you're gonna see this and they obviously have the cilia right and then also the gobbler cells i have to mention that right gobbler cells uh then you have cilia gobbler cells and then obviously the brass cells there too or basal cells too all right usually like it's basal cells are present there now then after that what's gonna happen if this guy gets split into what do we call that as a well if you want to be very very specific it will get split into your large bronchioles okay from the large bronchioles it will get split into, split into like smaller bronchioles bronchioles and then from the small bronchioles it will become your terminal bronchioles okay now like whenever you become large bronchioles okay what happens is that the cells the cells become from a pseudo pseudo stratified or by the way ciliated we have to write down the ciliated too okay so pseudo stratified is a ciliated okay all those so pseudo stratified ciliated what happens is like here from the large bronchioles what happens is that it it will it will become ciliated ciliated a columnar epithelial okay that's what it will become and then with the uh, it might you might see like a little bit of like maybe very less 
uh, gobbler cells. Okay, very less gobbler, very few cilia. And the, from here, the small bronchial terminal bronchioles, here you're going to see, basically you're going to see a, uh, the columnar epithelium, okay, columnar epithelium, but what happens is that in terminal bronchioles, you're not going to see any gobbler cell. Okay, goblet cells are not present in your terminal bronchial. That's a key feature. Okay, and the, the lining that is actually lining this terminal bronchial is going to be a, your columnar epithelium. And maybe like uh, you know, maybe few. It could be maybe it may have like some few cilia too. Uh, okay, or it may not too. Uh, uh, so, uh, but usually, uh, usually it's going to be a columnar epithelia. Okay, and all this so far that we're talking about, it's. Uh, it is a conductive zone, right? And the main function of conductive zone is, as I said, like, you know, when, uh, the, the filtrations and not allowing things to get in. And one of the things I do have to also mention, one thing is like, look, there is something called, like right here, carina, okay? And this carina is like down here, but this is a very, very sensitive area. Uh, whenever this right and left, uh, uh, the trachea divides into two right and main bronchus, there's a small portion down here, this area, it's got carina, very sensitive area. So whenever any sort of like noxious substance comes in, it, it, it does cough reflux, okay? And that is also, so it throws out, it's expel out, expel out uh, whatever substance, it, substance, and it also acts as a sort of like a uh, 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 defense mechanisms, okay? And the same thing happens the larynx as well. And other thing is that, uh, as I said, as I, as I said, there's, there's something called down there present, they call this a ciliary escalator, okay? The role of this is actually, whenever whatever the mucus, whatever they produces, okay, it, you have to, if you gobble cell produce a lot of mucus, right? Maybe there's like some kind of like, let's say prostaglandins or histamines are there. So because of that, what happens, it'll excel out, right? Uh, so this, from the ciliary, ciliary escalator, it'll go and it'll maybe release your intestines, okay? Or go to your stomach. So that is the role of this uh, ciliary escalator, uh, ciliary transport, that's what it means. And usually this ciliary uh, escalator is able to like even, uh, you know, able to even throw out some of the bathrooms that's usually size of like from like uh, 2 to like uh, 10 micrometers, okay? 10 to 2 micrometers, all right? But if less than 2 micrometer, it has going to go to the alveoli. And then there, we'll talk about that too, what's going to happen there. Okay? And then one of the things is like, look, one of the things you all, you also have to uh, know that is like, remember, and these are, these carinas and all that kind of stuff, this response to uh, any sort of irritant, okay? So, irritant, and then the smooth muscle cells down here, like those, so the story, they are smooth muscle cells. These guys, Okay, when they get irritated through the vagus nerve, what's going to happen? The, to the vagus nerve, okay, it's going to bring the sensory innovation to the vagus nerve, and the vagus more efferent will come, and it can also do a bronchial constrictions. Okay, so that way, and so the so that way, uh, that's also one of the way of like uh, uh, that's also one of the defense mechanism uh, this lungs lungs play. Okay, now sometimes, and then. Other things we have to also understand is now, after we talk about all the all the terminal bronchioles, as I said, the key feature is that these guys do not participate in gas gas accidents of your terminal bronchioles. Okay, now, now then after terminal bronchioles becomes your what respiratory, respiratory bronchioles. Okay, respiratory. And if I make this respiratory bronchioles, I'll just quickly make this. All right, splitting all this kind of. All right, and then all this. Making this like, all right. So it's like it looks something like this. So it makes like the bronchial tree actually, okay? Inverted bronchial tree. And obviously we'll just make this as all right. We'll make this as this gas exchange area. All right. Now, so basically, let's just make this a respiratory bronchial. like down here, okay? And then it will become respiratory bronchial. It'll become like this. This must must acts, okay? Respiratory bronchioles. And this respiratory bronchioles have one of the key features is that this is gonna from the respiratory bronchioles, it's gonna start participating in gas exchange, right? Now, one of the most important things the respiratory bronchioles is that like the cells of the, the lining of the respiratory bronchioles, the cells are gonna be, it's gonna be like you know, uh it's not gonna be columnar anymore, but it's gonna be a cuboidal, cuboidal in a uh, cuboidal epithelial tissue, okay. So cuboidal epithelium, it's lining by cuboidal epithelial liner. And from the like, respiratory bronchioles, which get split into a uh, mm, uh, couple of things, like, you know, two or six, like alveolar ducts, and then alveolar sacs, 
right? Alveolar sac, right? And then alveoli. And then what these guys are lining by is they very thin. Uh, what happens? The cell can uh, takes a shape and change it and become your simple squamous epithelium. Okay, this is usually lining by your, your alveoli or in here. And the simple squamous are very, very thin, okay? Because of that, what happens in partisan gas extension, you have alveoli, about like 300 million alveoli, right? Uh, and if you add all the surface area of the alveoli, I think it makes about like 80 meters square. That's like a, like half of like tennis court or something like that. Now, one of the things I do have to mention that in the respiratory bronchioles or even terminal bronchioles, they are very, very important to have a cell that are present. These cells are called, uh, you know, they're called Clara cells, or they're also called club cells, okay? And the reason why this is very, very important, the Clara and club cells, is because this can also participate or play a role in producing surfactant types of molecules, okay? So, surfactant types of molecules it can produce. And what are surfactants? Surfactants is a complex molecule, right? They have phospholipids, uh, lecithin, and then also lipoproteins, right? And uh, it it helps with the breathing. It it uh, it makes lung lung more compliant, okay, and reduces your surface tension, okay. So it prevents from the uh, your lung to collapse, okay. So that's the surfactant molecules. And the class is also very important because what happens? They have this P450 types of uh, in your in their in their cell. So what happens? That it helps to break down any sort of like a, uh, any sort of like dangerous substances, like noxious substances. That's what also it does. And these clara cells are stem cells. Uh, these club cells also act as a stem cells. That's what I have to have to. These are some of the functions of your uh, your your clara cells. But remember, one of the clara cells you have to remember is that the clara cells are they're cuboidal in nature. But they're not ciliated, so they're non ciliated, okay? They're not ciliated. They're not ciliated, okay? That's a class. And the classes are usually found in respiratory bronchioles. And some of them are also find in your terminal bronchioles, but uh, terminal bronchioles as well. Now, now, there are functions of that, right? Now, as this, as as from like you go from trachea to the trachea to lungs, uh, one of the things you get to see increase in a lot of elastic fibers because lungs have a lot of elastic properties, right? So this is why the lung always wants to recoil inward. Okay, lung doesn't like to because of the lot of elasticity. So lungs, like down here in the alveoli, especially, it has a lot of this uh, elastic elastic tissue also. All right, that's also one thing I have to mention. Now, let's just talk real quickly about the uh, li little bit of alveoli. The what is alveoli in nature is because alveoli are in order to have a good gas exchange. Let me just uh, erase this. Uh, in order to have a good good gas exchange, the couple of things you need to have. One thing is that good exchange requires you need to have a large surface area. All right, that is the, one of the key features of that. And other things should be the, the lining of the epithelial should be very, very thin, all right? The, 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 I'm talking about the, the membrane. I'm talking the surface membrane, okay? Surface membrane for the good accent. Okay, the thin. It should be moisture, okay? That's what our surfactant, surfactant does, right? And it should be like permeable for the diffusion for gases molecules. So, uh, uh, permeable to to gases molecules, right? So these are some of that thing, right? Now, last surface should be relatively thin, moisture and the permeable to the uh, gas molecule. This should be, this should be, it, this needs to be required in order for a proper good excellence. And if I make this alveolar, let's just make this alveolar right here, okay? I'm just making this. So it's making this alveolar already, right, right? So let's just make this alveolar, make this one is one alveolar, this alveolar. You know what I just do right here? This area is alveoli, or like all this alveoli, we have about like 30 million. They're interconnected by something called pores of cone. Okay? And these pores of cone, what is the, the, the pores of cone? They're into all the alveoli are into. So that's just why, like, you know, what happens, like, if the macrophases are down here, for alveolar macrophases, it can actually easily cross and get to the end of the one. It's also because I also think that maybe, like, you know, because these alveoli are interconnected with, uh, with this, this thing called pores of cone, because of that, like, you know, Whenever diseases are here, it can easily go and go in another one and uh, and uh, damage the other alveoli, right? That's why 
the, the disease spreads very very quickly in your lung areas comparing to the other other organs uh, maybe because these alveoles are interconnected with this uh, this thing called uh, the pores of cone okay now this is quickly i want to mention that but that but then then i'm going to quickly talk about the 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 blood air barrier okay so let's just make that so if i make this alveoli right here okay let's just make this one Beautiful alveoli right here, okay? I'll make this beautiful alveoli right here. Here's sort of what happens, and then we'll make this a blot right here, too. And then there's a blot right here, okay? And they're interstitial. Usually, like, you know, they have this, the, this type 1 cells, okay? These are called type 1 pneumocytes, okay? Type 1 pneumocytes. So, these are type 1 pneumocytes, or they say uh, alveolar cells, type 1 alveolar cells. That's what they call they cells. So, and then what happens, the type 1 cell, these guys are large in nature, okay? they're very, very large. Because of that, uh, because of the large, it actually, uh, large in nature, but they're very uh, thin. So they make like 90% of your surface area by this type 1 alveolar cells. And this type 1 alveolar cells are the one that is actually participating into the gas exchange. And there's also another type of cells, we say that as called the type 2 cells, okay? the type uh, TYP uh, uh, type 2 cells and these are uh, called you can say type 2 pneumocytes they're also called granular pneumocytes uh, okay the granular pneumocytes and then the role is that these guys are very very actually compact and small okay because of that these guys and these guys also have like these are very very compact and small uh, compact like you know and then what they do is that these guys have those lamellar bodies okay they have a lamellar bodies and they they produce surfactants these guys is the one that produce surfactants and surfactants remember as i said is a complex molecule right it has it's amphiphatic it has a it has a both hydrophilic and hydrophobic person uh, there's a the surfactant molecule that it produces by this one is well, let me erase this okay uh, this produces surfactant molecules. It's called uh, you have this DPPC, dipamethyl phosphatidyl choline. Okay, and it has those phospholipids. That's right, phospholipids. Okay, which I call lecithin, right? And then lipoproteins, right? Made out of this complex, right? Lipoproteins. And these guys, let me write down. Uh, this is surfactants. Their functions is uh, to reduce the surface tension. Okay. So, with like prevents, uh, prevents long to collapse, right? What else it does? Uh, helps uh, easy with uh, helps with breathing, helps with breathing, with with breathing, right? What it what it does? It also here's the surface that helps with breathing, prevents long to collapse, right? Helps with breathing, and then uh, uh, it also for the it moisturizes. I mean, it moistures. Uh, the area it makes a dry area so that way it doesn't you know uh, the the the, the uh, makes a dry area and also one of the, they also play a role as the opsonization what does that mean opsonization basically means that they have a they have this apple proteins like you know they have this apple protein like apple a, a b a c like d and this apple a what it does is like whenever because remember they also have the they, there is a there's a fixed macrophages down here those fixed macrophages right here those are called dust cells also they call as pulmonary pulmonary alveolar macrophages or they also call like a heart failure cells uh, and what they do is like whenever any sort of pathogen comes in really what happens like let's say this is my uh, micro macrophages right here right this is macrophages what happens and let's say this is my bacteria right here whenever the any sort of bacteria comes in really what happens is that the whenever the macrophages try to eat the bacteria maybe the bacteria spill out right so because of what happens is whenever this uh surfactant produces this apoport opsonizations when it bounds here when it go and stick with the one side of the bacteria like let's say this uh this opsonization it stick with the one side of bacteria and whenever bacteria Macrophage that comes uh, and try to gobble up this this opsonization that will also get sticky and stick with the macrophages. So that with the this virus will not able to come out. Okay, so that's the role of opsonizations. So that's how it helps with the phagocytosis process. Okay, that's what surfactant does. Okay, that's that's very very important the important thing uh, for the surfactants surfactants to do. Now. 
and this is produced by obviously as a type of pneumocytes. And this type of pneumocytes also act as a acts as stem cells. Okay, stem cells basically means that if the if the type there's problem with the type one pneumocytes, if there there are damage, and so the type of pneumocytes can have a tendency to actually. Uh, uh, make more like type 1 pneumocytes okay so type 2 pneumocytes also act as a stem cells and it's very very important 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 types of cells and also as i said the macrophages play a very important role macrophages also play one more thing is like uh you know any sort of like any sort of like as i say anything less than like two micrometer micrometers of anything comes in like any uh anything or any pathogens or so uh, this uh, macrophages can gobble up that and can destroy that and, and macrophages makes this area pretty clean actually because usually and if you look at the trachea and other area like you know your bronchi they have the mucociliary but in a tray uh, in your alveoli a muco uh, this ciliary transfers are not present there okay so the alveoli makes it uh, a pretty clean okay now after that you have to also remember this what is this down here this is going to be a basement membrane right here right and then if you look at this let's just make this as mine Long capillaries. Long capillary has this capillaries called continuous capillaries are present on the con continuous epithelial tissues are there. And then what happens is a long, and this is a basement membrane here. That's a, this is a extracellular fluid. And then this is the alveoli. And then what happens is this alveoli and then your capillary basement kind of like fuse together fused together here okay so it makes it like one basement memory pretty much uh, for them and and this this is uh, this alveolar and uh, this uh, the capillary this whole of this makes your blood air barrier okay and they are very very relatively thin because that's what we want right you have large surface you have thin you need to be moisture permeable to the gas accents uh, gas accent and this type one pneumocytes uh, which actually are very very important the uh, because they are very within natures and they help with the um, gas exchange. And remember one more thing I do have to mention is that these guys do produce like somewhat like, you know, they do have a mucus cells and they do produce mucus, right? And what happens is mucus will get propel out right and then later what happens is that uh, after the bronchi and formed by the mucocellular transporter will actually uh, remove those out and maybe send to the intestines okay